Greetings, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of ATP, Ask the Pastor. I am still Pastor Joshua Sullivan here at beautiful Holy Cross Lutheran Church in Kerrville, Texas. Today's question. Someone writes in, Good morning, Pastor Sullivan. Is it best practice to omit a or some scripture readings from the divine service in order to make time for other things, such as the installation of church officers? This church has multiple services, so they don't want to risk going over time. Thank you for your work on this series. Ah, yes. You, my friend, are bumping into that age-old, time-honored tradition, that most holy and sacred tradition that states that the divine service must last only an hour. Uh, this tradition was, of course, given to Moses on Mount Sinai. It was passed on through countless generations, uh, and now it has come down to us in the rule that the divine service shall last one hour, not one minute more, but preferably three or four minutes less. Now, I'm being sarcastic, of course, and, and the reason I'm joking about this is because this is the way that some people view the time slot of the divine service, uh, especially in congregations where you have multiple services, and so everything has to run fairly smoothly if you want Sunday mornings to go off without a hitch then. It's easy to look at this issue and say that it's simply a scheduling question or that it's a matter of personal preference and that's it. But I think there's more to it than that. Now, that's because whenever something is omitted from the divine service, you better have a good reason for omitting it. Because everything we do in the divine service teaches either God's law or God's gospel. Uh, everything in the divine service teaches. That's the thing that really is, that's the rock bottom foundation of this thing. Uh, in your scenario, someone has made the choice to omit the hearing of God's word so that congregational officers could be installed. My big question is, what message does this send to people? Well, first, uh, I think that it teaches that the divine service can be viewed like anything else in the digital age, that it is subject to cut and paste, uh, that we don't have to have the entire thing, but rather we can just pick our favorite parts or what we have time for and we can add other parts. And that's, that's not what the divine service is. The divine service is a unit. It's a totality. Uh, it's going somewhere. It's telling a story. It's rehearsing the story of our salvation from the beginning to the end. And so you don't want to omit part of it. So there's that aspect of its teaching. It's teaching in the liturgy's cut and paste, and it, it historically isn't. Secondly, though, and more importantly, is what it's teaching about the Word of God itself. Uh, now, we say I say this specifically because in in your case, it's it, it's a scripture lesson, or some of these scripture lessons being omitted. Then, uh, what this is inadvertently teaching is that congregational business supersedes the hearing of the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying that the pastor of your church means to convey this message. That's, that's the farthest thing from the truth. He probably does not mean to convey this message whatsoever. Inadvertently, this is what this sort of thing teaches them. Uh, everything we do in the divine service teaches something. And that means that when we omit something from the divine service, that omission means something as well. Now, in this case, the church is inadvertently teaching or confessing against its own confession because the scriptures are the very words of God to sinful humanity by which we may have life. Uh, that's the entire reason that we, def uh, that we attend divine service. We go to the Lord's house on the Lord's day to hear the Lord's word. Then. Uh, we hear it read. We hear it preached. And that word is the source of our life because it's through the word that the Holy Spirit creates faith in us initially. And then it's through that word read, listened to, heard, preached, meditated upon, that the Holy Spirit is continually strengthening that faith, fortifying our faith, and nurturing it then. So by omitting the word, you're omitting the source of our very life then. You know, think about what the psalmist says in Psalm 119, the longest psalm, uh, but arguably one of the best, one of my most favorite at least, uh, because that is a hymn of praise about God's word, about how necessary and how life-giving it is. He even mentions several times in that uh, how vivifying it is uh, and how uh, restorative it is, that how, re how it revives his soul. That St. Paul says in Romans chapter 10, verse 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So hearing the word is the entire reason that we go to the divine service. Uh, you know, there's a reason that the first part of the divine service is even summarized and called the service of the word uh, because it culminates in the reading of the word and then the preaching of the word based on what has been written. Then. Now, as I was thinking about how to best answer your question, um, 
a question of my own popped into my head, uh, and that was, does this practice of omitting the scripture lessons from the service, uh, does it have any sort of history? Is, is it just a personal preference of pastors these days in our cut and paste age? Or uh, is there any sort of official sanction for it? So I did some digging. I went back to uh, the Lutheran liturgy. This is, this is the altar book uh, for TLH, 1941 hymnal, the Lutheran hymnal. Uh, and it says here on page 420, before the epistle for the day uh, and appointed lesson from the Old Testament, may be read, but the epistle lesson for the day and the gospel for the day shall always be read. Uh, so there you have it within the official rubrics that the epistle and the gospel shall always be read. Now, this even shows up in the Pew edition of TLH uh, in the Lutheran liturgy. On page 20, uh, it says before the epistle, then the minister shall read the epistle. And you have that word, shall. Uh, on the next page, Page 21, the minister shall read the gospel for the day. And lest anyone think that we can interpret the word shall as uh, may or that this is optional, if you go to the very front of TLH, page 4 under the general rubrics, it disabuses us of that notion. It says on page 4, the word shall in the rubrics makes the part of the service so designated obligatory, while the word may leaves it optional. So the rubrics for the Lutheran hymnal put into practice what we've just been saying earlier about the hearing of the word of God. It is something that shall be done. It is obligatory that you hear the word of God and that you have preaching on the word of God in the divine service because it is vitally important for us. It's the entire reason that we're there. Now, I also then consulted the altar book uh, for Lutheran worship that came out in 1982. I don't have the altar book for Lutheran service book anymore uh, or for any of the other Lutheran denominations, so I'm just going to have to limit this to uh, TLH and LW. Uh, now that hymnal uh, introduces an idea that was foreign to TLH back in 1941, uh, the idea of omitting readings. On the altar book, uh, page 27 of the Lutheran worship altar book reads, when for brevity's sake the epistle is omitted, the verse is sung after the gradual or the psalm between the Old Testament reading and the gospel. So there within the official altar book for Lutheran worship, 1982, uh, you have this novelty added where uh, the Old Testament can be read and then the epistle can be omitted. And there's that phrase, for brevity's sake. Now, like I said, I can't speak for Lutheran service book or any of the other Lutheran hymnals floating around out there. But what I find most interesting in this is uh, that since at least 1982, uh, the rubrics of the Missouri Synod officially sanction the cutting out of the epistle uh, for no other reason than for brevity's sake. Uh, now, I think this is unfortunate to say the least uh, because what it's doing is it is it is officially sanctionizing uh, sanctionizing well that's not a word uh, it is officially sanctioning there we go uh, sanctioning the prioritization of our time over the hearing of god's word it's saying that our time in some cases may be more important than actually hearing from the epistle texts. Uh, so this is a very clear and abrupt departure from the history of things, and, and it's a novelty. Again, I don't know what the Lutheran service book does on this. I don't know what the Wisconsin hymnal does on this. Frankly, it doesn't matter, because uh, once these sorts of things have been, you know, once this genie's been left out of the bottle, you can't stuff them back in. Uh, that's just part of it. Now, uh, if your service must clock in at an hour, uh, then frankly, I think there are other things that can be cut. I think you need to pick shorter hymns, or, uh, you know, your pastor needs to be slightly uh, briefer uh, in his sermon. Uh, and, and even then, uh, with those ideas, uh, don't, those aren't ideal. Uh, sometimes the divine service is just going to go over an hour. And we need to realize that, that this is the most important hour or hour and five or hour and ten minutes of our week because we're gathering to hear the word of God. I think when people have a problem with this... Uh, so that they're prioritizing their time and their scheduling over the word of God, I think they need to take to heart the words of the psalmist in Psalm 122, when the psalmist says, I was glad when they said unto me, let us go unto the house of the Lord. Now, if schedule becomes so important that we ditch the hearing and the reading of scripture, then we're well on our way to despising God's word when we should be holding it sacred and gladly hearing and learning it, especially in the divine service. That's how I see it. Thanks for the question. If you've got a question about this or another topic, shoot me an email, atpholycross at gmail.com, atpholycross at gmail.com. We'll put your question in the queue and we'll get to you as soon as we're able. We'll see you next time on Ask the Pastor.